Hey, ¿qué tal mi gente? De Veando en Forma, bienvenidos a un nuevo video. Así como lo pueden ver, estamos acá con mi amigo Alex, estamos en otra locación, estamos en Surrey. Y bueno, acá estamos con un nuevo video trayéndoles más información sobre Malta, sobre cómo venir a Malta, sobre cómo buscar trabajo acá en Malta. Ese va a ser el tema fundamental y principal en este video. Y vamos a hablar sobre una industria que es la industria que más demanda, donde más oportunidades laborales hay acá en Malta y es la industria de la hostelería, de los hoteles y todo esto, que es donde yo considero que el 80% de las personas que migran a Malta se emplean y que hay muchas oportunidades en ese sector, entonces nadie mejor que Alex que nos pueda compartir, nos pueda dar algunas recomendaciones sobre cómo buscar trabajo sobre cómo es esta industria acá en Malta. Así que bueno, acá tenemos unas preguntas, así que vamos a comenzar ya mismo. Bueno chicos, y este video va a ser en inglés, ustedes saben que es importante, pues obviamente acá en Malta se habla inglés, es importante que ustedes se vayan familiarizando poco a poco con este idioma y bueno, digamos que este va a ser como un primer ejercicio en este canal para que ustedes, incluso esto les va a servir como un test para que ustedes vayan mejorando su inglés y vayan mirando a ver si ya están listos para buscar trabajo acá en Malta con el nivel de inglés que tienen. Bueno, puedo entender todo. Yeah, yeah. <risa> We can also say like something in English and in Spanish at the same time. No, no big deal. My first question, if someone is coming to look any job opportunity here in Malta in this industry, uh, what is the first thing that someone has to take here in Malta? Hospitality industry, it's uh, very easy for people to find mm -hmm. work to start with. It uh, requires uh, people to show that they are really interested to work in the hospitality uh, sector, which means that people should be customer oriented. What people need to pay attention to is that English, it is very important. Mm -hmm. So you have to have English to work in hospitality because you deal with people from different countries and English is like the main language that you speak with your customers. So that would be number one. And number two would be people to be ready to work different type of shifts, day yeah. or night. So there is no like Monday to Friday. Yeah, it's that's, uh, that's a business important. that is ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, what about CV? Any recommendation? What CV. should I... When it comes to the CV, and especially if you're coming from abroad, mm -hmm. the employer would not be 100% sure whether you really worked into this Uh, specific areas that you are showing on your CVs, but it is important to show in your CV that you worked in hospitality. But on during the interview process with the management and with the HR, they are trained and they have the knowledge to understand whether the candidate who is on the C on the interview process is really talking the truth mm -hmm. that he or she is interested to work on his in hospitality or no. So CV it is important, but it's more important how you're gonna present yourself into the interview stage. Okay, so at this point I have this question. People should apply online or people should be go straight there to the um, hotels and hmm. ask for any opportunity or any job Interesting available? Interesting question. Uh, online you can apply only if you are abroad, but 99% you're not getting any work online. Hmm. That's confirmed because in Malta there are so many hotels, mm -hmm. so many places that people can work, but at the same time a lot of people are looking for work on spot. Yeah. And you also have uh, the outsourcing companies that they are bringing manpower into the hotels. So online I wouldn't suggest anyone to apply, especially if they're coming from abroad. They need to be here in Malta yeah. and look for opportunity directly in hotels. Yeah, because there are a lot of people asking me, should I apply from here? Let's say in my case from Colombia, people coming from Latin America, they ask always like, should I apply for from here and just to have already some uh, uh, option to mm -hmm. work there? So. 
it's better to come here first and then start going and looking around uh, for opportunities and going to the interview, be able to attend any interview, you know, because yes. I think that's very important. You know what I just remembered? What you mentioned now uh, when your audience is asking you whether they should apply online or no. People might get disappointed mm -hmm. if they apply online and they don't get any response. Yeah, yes, that's so, right. Guys, if you're watching this and you're planning to move and you're applying online and there is no response, it's not that there is no work in Malta. It's just that there's so many people looking for opportunities here on spot that no one is taking the willingness to mm -hmm. start going through online CVs and do online interviews to import people from abroad. Yeah, and it's also important to mention that nowadays there are a lot of competition and there are a lot of people with good English level. Yes. So we have to compete. We have to improve our skills and be willing to work, as you said, like from the beginning in any position. And from there, we can start like a new career in this uh, industry. So yes. uh, let me ask you second question. What kind of jobs or salaries can we get from this uh, industry in Malta? When you're coming from non-EU, unless you are super skilled, unless you are coming referred from another hotel mm -hmm. to Malta, then your beginning would always be in a lower position and in positions that you are getting lower salaries. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're working as waiter as in as housekeeping, it's pretty much the same salary that people are getting. And there are two different types of salaries. One is that is coming directly from the uh, cleaning service companies that are providing you with work in hotels. And the other part is if you are working directly with the hotel. Mm -hmm. So to put these two into perspective, how it looks, if you're coming to Malta and you are hired directly from a cleaning service company, they are paying you per hour, per usually hour. four euros, 50 cents, five euros, 550, mm -hmm. maximum six euros. And then they send you into a hotel where you work. You can work as dishwasher, you can work as cleaner, you can work as receptionist, as waiter, whatsoever. Okay. So this is one payment, one salary. But the other salary, if you are directly employed by the hotels, All right. which has different scale. If it's a three star hotel, four star, five star, and the salaries, let's say, I would talk about receptionists, it starts from 1,200 euros gross and it mm -hmm. goes up to 1,500 euros oh, gross. That's great. So if it's two star hotel, three star hotel, four star, mm -hmm. five star, boutique hotel, Yeah, this hostel, also depends whatever. on the level or the, exactly. yeah, the category of the hotel, yes. you know? So here we go with the third question. Um, Le I would like to clarify or like to explain how is the proceed with the documents and mm -hmm. uh, with the work permit, with the contract and the way how um, the employees uh, hired. I already mentioned the cleaning service companies and working directly with the hotel mm -hmm. to not to repeat the same uh, thing twice, but if you work through a real through a cleaning service company, uh, you have the visa provided, the work permit from this company. Mm -hmm. And you get this set rate of five euros, five euros, 50 cents per hour. But then if you are working directly with the hotel, the hotel is paying you monthly. And mm -hmm. it's usually the last Friday of the month. Yeah. You get paid for 160 hours monthly that you worked. Anything above, it's going to be overtime or time in lieu. Overtime is when you're working overtime and yeah. time in lieu is when you're getting the extra hours you worked into your leave so you can reuse them again. Yeah, I think that's one of the many differences uh, we have here uh, to work directly with a hotel or work uh, through agencies. Agency. Yeah. Working through a hotel also, which is very important for people to know, is the contract. You have a contract that is definite of two years 
and it has a probation period of six months. Wow, so once you pass the six months, you are already in the cycle of two years mm -hmm. of a first definite contract, which means that if you resign, you are going to have to pay penalties. That's important and to, to mention it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it can be three months penalty, four months salary, five months salary, mm -hmm. or the whole months that you are going to skip mm -hmm. until the completion of the definite contract. Once you finish with the first definite contract, you go on to the second definite contract, which mm -hmm. is in total of four years. So then after the fourth year, the completion of the second contract, you are getting indefinite contract, which is something that everyone aspires to have in Malta because then it's easier for you to get loans. Yeah. It also helps you if you want to apply for the permanent residence mm -hmm. after five, six years of living in Malta. Mm -hmm. And it also helps if you work for one employer to show that you are yeah. sticking with one employer, not changing a lot. Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> that's a very good recommendation for someone who is coming here. Like, I, I also, I'm speaking from my experience, I got a contract in the, the, in the company where I'm working. So, and I have been like working already like three years here in the same company. Yeah. And I feel like in my comfort zone now, and uh, they already know who I am. They already know how I work. And I think that's the best way to show them that I'm a good uh, candidate or yeah. like a hard worker. And uh, everything fluid is fluent easily, you know? Yes. Yeah. And, and you I get promotions as well. When yeah, you exactly, work yeah. with one employer and you're there for several years, you scale up, you go, you go further with your career, yeah, more money. Better that's how you positions. succeed in this, uh, in Malta or in these uh, jobs here yes. in this country. It's true. It's not only about exactly as you said at the end. Uh, the, this country, it's not only a specific industry. You have work in hospitality industry and work five, six years and level mm -hmm. up. You can be in uh, gaming, you can be in accounting, finance, yeah. whatsoever, marketing, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Consistency is important that you are staying with the company for a longer time and also that you're showing that you are capable to work and bring new fresh ideas into the company. Okay, okay. So let me ask you the first question. What kind of skill or knowledge um, someone has to have to apply for this kind of jobs opportunity? Number one, which we mentioned, is English. English. People really look into English. So English is uh, crucial for you to have, uh, not even basic, even a bit more than basic, because you speak with people. Yeah. The second thing is you really need to have the will the willingness, you need to have the wish to work in hospitality with people, which means that you need to show that you are a customer oriented person. Mm -hmm. So this I wouldn't be saying it's a skill. I think this is more of a nature of a person. You need to be someone that loves to work with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last thing that I would say is uh, the which I mentioned already the fresh ideas. Uh, fresh ideas are also something that comes natural from us uh -huh. uh, when we can show to our bosses and employers and uh, management that we have ideas to show and present something new to the company for the benefit of the company. Either it's something that uh, will help to increase the, I don't know, popularity of the hotel mm -hmm or it's something that it's cutting the cost in the company, whatsoever. Yes, and I always say like, if you already get the opportunity to work here in any company, you have to use this time, like your free time to continue studying or to continue improving your first like mm -hmm. English skill or like trying to uh, find any course or trying to improve this and follow this path mm -hmm. that you already have, you know? so you can uh, work better and you can compete yeah. always better. So um, any other recommendation that you want to share with us in general to succeed in this uh, industry? Because this video is only talking about the hospitality industry. I would like to maybe may record more videos about another industry for sure people will love it yeah, yeah because malta is offering a lot of opportunities and uh, this is the main industry here i know but there are also uh, more industries in this uh, island so alex 
You know what? Now when you mentioned if I have any other recommendation, I do have a recommendation. And it's not only about the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. it's in general. I think it's more of like in life, regardless if it's in Malta or another country. It's the attitude that you need to have, which should be, yes, I can. Yeah. Yes, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So this is what you need to show. And let's say if we are talking about hotels, something that many people are complaining of doing in hotels is working night shifts. So management is quite happy when they see that someone is willing to work the nights. And if there is, let's say, some of your colleagues being on sick leave and your manager is calling you and being like, can you work the night? And you go straight away. Yes, of <laughs> course. This is something that it's respected and appreciated. And yeah. it's kind of like the key of success. Mm -hmm. And also, which I mentioned earlier, when you present yourself that you can do and that you can implement fresh ideas, your manager and employer is paying attention to these things and he will be or she will be investing into you so that you can continue further in your career. Yeah, I think that's crucial, you know, mm -hmm. that's the key to succeed here in Malta. You have to show your best attitude everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. I think that's thank everything you. for today, for this video. Thank you for, for staying here with me to answer and give us all of thank this you recommendation. I'm sure that uh, I'm going to finish the video in Spanish, if you don't mind. Of course, por yeah. supuesto. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, chicos, espero que toda esa información les sirva. De verdad que estoy haciendo mi mayor esfuerzo por ayudarlos, por compartirles. Y bueno, acá algunas recomendaciones que acaban de escuchar. Síganlas y bueno, de pronto uh, también pueden activar los subtítulos en español si de pronto para ustedes fue un poquito complicado como entender el inglés para que toda la información llegue completa a todos. Entonces amigos, ya nos despedimos de este video. Thank you so much for uh, all the information that you gave us today. Thank you for having me. Very useful and uh, I'm sure people will uh, love it for sure. And uh, yeah, that's it. So see you guys next week in a new video. Bye bye. Hasta luego. Bye. <laughs>